Okay, so can you hear me? It's good? Yeah. Okay, so I'm Rogério. I work with a quite of many scientists around the world, uh, including Alex. What we do together, drink beers, but also we study the cause and consequence of extreme disruptions in wheat supply. Uh, up to start, we, I will point to some, to some uh, extreme uh, events that happened in the last decades that actually was in the media. So we start with the, what happened in Brazil in 2006. This was actually the lowest production uh, in the last, the lowest wheat production in the last uh, 20 years in Brazil. And this was, this, this was caused by extreme weather events, basically frost and, uh, and very dry conditions, and uh, also low price. So basically, what happened in Brazil, when you have a very low wheat price, usually the farmers, they don't get the incentive that they need to plant. So they plant much less, and then combined with extreme weather events, then you can have very low, very low productions. Uh, the second one, what happened in France in 2016, this uh, was a lot in the news because France is actually the largest wheat production in the European Union, and uh, it's, they also have a very stable production. Uh, and in 2016, they, have, they had the lowest wheat production for the last 60 years since they actually they started the records. And uh, this was actually, they, they, they have some projections indicates that there are droughts coming to France, but this was actually caused by the opposite, the excess of rainfall. And this uh, really uh, gained media attention. And the third one is what we're still living, uh, which was a consequence of the pandemic and plus uh, the Russia uh, and the Ukraine war. So that was the cover of the economist in, in, last year, in, in the last year. So here we have the wheat price, let me go on this side. So here we have the oh, okay. Uh, here we have the wheat price since 1959 to 2023. We can see here that in the last in the first 15 years the wheat price was quite stable, right? You can see here, and then we had the first peak. Uh, sorry, okay. We had the first peak, which was basically caused by increased demand of the Soviet Union. Uh, the population was increasing that time and extreme weather in major uh, grain exporters, especially in this time, Canada and US. Second, then was again stable, we can say stable for almost 20 years, and then we had a small peak here that was basically increased demand in the newly industrialized Asia countries, and then three years of low grain production due to extreme weather events. At this time, already including the Soviet Union uh, countries, and also US, Canada, and so. And then we had another time of, of uh, a stable price, and then we had a huge peak uh, that occurred in 2008. You see that was the first price, the first time that the price reached was above $400 uh, a ton of wheat. And here we was basically uh, a mood basket failure due to extreme weather events, so many exporter countries they failed uh, to produce wheat in the same year. Uh, US, Canada, Russia, uh, Europe, Australia, all of them they have very bad, very bad harvest in the same years. And then we had two, uh, two peaks here that was both of them Russians uh, heat waves. And then we had the pandemic, maybe you cannot see because, but here is the beginning of the pandemic, and then the war in Ukraine, okay? And then we reached again $450 a ton. So the nice thing here is to compare that actually a pandemic and uh, war together had the same impact of extreme weather event in 2018 in the wheat price. And, uh, but why I mentioned Brazil and France? So I think, oh yeah, but first we can actually divide the things in, in groups. So we can say economic growth can cause increased demand, right? Can cause uh, uh, an increase in price, basically, price is basically a balance between offer and demand. If you have an increase in demand or a problem in offer, you have, you have problems, right? So economic growth is one problem. Global crisis, where you cannot see, but you had COVID and the war there. And the third would be extreme weather events, which affects which the, the red points here. 
Uh, but why I said Brazil? So here's what happens in Brazil. So here we have two plots, wheat and soybean. Basically, Brazil, it's a big, uh, it produces lots of food. Uh, they say 20% of the population is fed by food from Brazil, but uh, they, not, they do not produce enough wheat. And this is the comparison of wheat, uh, which Brazil imports, and soybean, which Brazil is the biggest exporter. So here we have the price in the currents of Brazil, the black line. So we see uh, from since 2006 to uh, then we see actually the beginning of the, the crisis here, the COVID, and you see that there is a, a they, they, they lose the value compared to dollar. And then we have here uh, in the red, the wheat price in the world and the wheat price in Brazil in dollar. So wheat price in Brazil, in the currency of Brazil and in dollar. So, and you have the same here for soybean. And when you do this line, so this line, this dashed blue line above the, the, the red line, or it means when you do the price in dollars of wheat in Brazil and compare to the world, we see that the wheat price in Brazil can get up to 80% higher than in the world. And of course, this happens usually you have these peaks after extreme uh, events affect wheat production in Brazil, as for example in 2006, that affect 2006 and 7, and in 2012, for example. Uh, and you don't see the same for Brazil. So basically what happens is disruptions in production and supply, they cause inflation, impoverishment, uh, impoverishment of the population, basically because if you have to spend more money buying food, right, you cannot, you don't, you don't spend money in order, for example, buying clothes, uh, drinking beers, or doing something else, and then you affect the economy in cycle. Okay, and what do you do with this? Of course, we do science. Uh, and basically, our objective is understand the cause of production failures, quantify the future frequency of these events, and indicate ways to compensate for production failure. Basically, that's what we have done for Brazil. In Brazil, we pick uh, all the, 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 the cause of that happened, that caused in 2006, and we project this for, for future climate change, and you see that in RCP 7.5 here, uh, Okay, this is actually a student didn't like. In, in, in RCP 7.0, uh, it varies according to, to, the, to the economic, to, to the wheat price, as I, as I mentioned before. But this event that usually occurs once every 20 years can occur seven, in 75% of the years, which would be 15 out of 20 years. So it's historical occurring. You can see historical occurring once per 20 years, but can increase up to 15 out of 20 years. This, uh, in France, what happened in France in 2016, we were able to quantify all the cause that caused it. So we see uh, here uh, the projections for the cause. We have here heavy rainfall, sol uh, solar radiation, here, which in this case was low solar radiation, plant disease, and anoxia, water logging. So we see uh, the projections are actually point for increasing in, in, all, uh, in all the calls of 2016, less, uh, but not for water logging, for anoxid, the, the final one. And this, here you can see that uh, the, this event is also expected to occur more often. It occurs usually 1% of the years, which is 1 out of 100 years, but it can happen in future up to 5, up five in 100 years. Uh, and this, actually, we quantify the ways to compensate for, for a possible export, a possible block in the Ukraine exports. Uh, Ukraine exports 19 million of wheat every year. So if they decide to block it, the other big exporters countries, they should produce, they should plant more 5.5 million hectares of wheat just to compensate the possible block of the wheat there or maybe increase the yield by 0 0.26. And if something happened, if any type of extreme weather events happen on top of it, this can reach 7.8 million hectares. And this would also mean half million tons we have here by country, but we have, this would also means half million tons of nitrogen. And that's it. Uh, 
I, I would like to show this, just to point this graph, because I saw Alex and I think also Erica presentation that you pointed all the, all the impacts that can happen in, in, in all the impacts that, that uh, frost and everything that can, can affect many aspects, right? Also agriculture. I think to end of them can affect agriculture. And this, this graph shows what the crop models does. The crop models, for those who, know, who doesn't know, usually they are very used, they are the ones used for, for project, projecting future climate uh, scenarios in agriculture. And you see that although most of them do water deficit and nitrogen deficit, only one third of them do, do water logging, half of them do heat, less than one third frost, and really small numbers of them do storms, other nutrients, and the sea. So we still have lots of to improve that. So that's, thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Joy?